I can picture it in my head. You have a new puppy and you finally get him off to sleep. You're exhausted from all the busy puppy schedule. So you tuck yourself into bed. And only a few short hours later, a whine or a bark or some major puppy fussing. If this sounds like something you're experiencing with your puppy, you are in the right place for some help. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some great tips and tricks for how to get a good night's sleep and enjoy your new puppy at the same time. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss another puppy training video. Let's take a step back and talk about some expectations. So we have to set some realistic expectations. It's very normal that your puppy won't sleep through the night at first. That puppy is probably coming to your home around eight weeks of age, so they might need to get up several times. Don't worry, this will change. Puppies usually start sleeping through the night at around 12 to 14 weeks of age. Before this age, they may not have the brain and bladder capacity to do it. So you have to be patient with them. It's not their fault. Now, if you've tuned in to my video about the realities of puppy ownership, <laughs> you've probably heard that before. If you wanna know more of what you're in for, check out that video next. Let's get into some of my other best tips. So you're going to schedule the day to get through the night. You're gonna to wanna to adjust the schedule so napping happens, but not too much. It's a hard balance to achieve, but with some trial and error, you'll get there. Now, I have a sample schedule in my new puppy starter kit. It's just that though, it's a sample. I go into even more detail on schedules in this popular video here, but the schedule is really based on your own home and your puppy. To minimize nightly wakings, pay close attention to the evening schedule. So in general, we advise not to wake a sleeping puppy, but that doesn't mean you can't do a little extra work to keep him from napping the entire evening away. Some pups really can't go more than an hour or two without a nap, but if you can change the timing, you might be better off. See if you can get that last nap just a little bit earlier, not so close to bedtime. Ensure age-appropriate exercises and Note, <laughs> puppies have a lot of energy when they are awake. Now, even if you aren't taking those neighborhood walks quite yet, they do need exercise. Right now, as you're working on leash skills, you might stick with the compression walks or sniffing excursions in empty fields or parking lots. Now, I can tell you more about that in this video here. Be sure to get your puppy out and experiencing new things when they are young and in this critical development period. Now, a lot of things will impact how well your puppy sleeps at night, like exercise and exposure to new things and rest during the day and even food. Let's dig into food for just a little bit. Check food consumption and timing. So many of my students have noticed that their puppy sleeps very well all night long until about 4 a.m. They appreciate not having to get up for the potty break, but most of us feel that 4 a.m. is a little too early to start the day. You might adjust the last meal to be maybe a little bit later than normal, or maybe give your pup a bedtime snack. I have a standard poodle named Wesley. I have to give him a bedtime snack close to bedtime just to keep his belly from being too empty. Some dogs who go too long with an empty stomach end up throwing up yellow foamy bile. That might be an indication that you'll want to adjust the feeding schedule. The single best tool you can use during this time of trial and error is a log. It seems silly to track all the activities your dog does, including naps and periods of increased energy and zoomies and potty and poo. But the more you track it, the better you'll see patterns that you can build on and mold into something that works for you. All right, let's talk about crate training for a moment. The schedule is one tool you can use, but tools alone do not shape a puppy's behavior. You need training. If you tuned into any of my other videos, you know that crate training is a really important part of raising a puppy. Crates provide a safe, comfortable place for your puppy to hang out and rest when sleeping, or when you're not at home, or you can't supervise them. The crate will be the best tool for nighttime as well. If you've been playing the crate training games throughout the day, outside of the time that you need your puppy to use it, and you're creating a positive association with the crate through some meals and treats and fun games, your puppy will soon learn that the crate is a fine place. It's like a bedroom. Using all the best crate training tools to promote rest will also help you. 
Now, I go over all those in this video here. This includes a white noise machine, crate cover, a dactyl diffuser, and maybe even a snuggle puppy. Before putting your pup in the crate at night, ensure he's had a chance to get out any evening zoomies or pent up energy. Once the zoomies are over, now's the time to do some cool down activities. This might be some low energy play with humans. It could be body handling where you're giving a massage or some light brushing. This cool down period is critical in getting your puppy's brain to be ready for rest. Did you know that chewing and sniffing are natural calming behaviors? They help your dog's brain to settle. After this cool down period, you're gonna want at least one potty break before bed, and then lead your pup to the crate, put the cover over, and send him off to dreamland. Now, until your pup gets used to his new surroundings and routine, he may cry for attention. If you cave and go to him every time he cries, you will teach him very quickly that all he has to do to get your attention is make a fuss. Your pup needs to learn to self-soothe. This means he may have to fuss or complain for a while until he falls asleep. Now, as long as he's not panicking, this is actually okay and something that he can learn from. Some people contact me and say, Musho, I can't let my puppy whine in the crate in the middle of the night. I live in an apartment. I get that. It is so challenging. And if you're sleep deprived at the same time, it's hard to think clearly. We'll talk about what to do in just a moment. Now, here's one thing not to do. Do not bring the puppy into your bed. Not yet, anyway. Now, of course, we want to snuggle our puppies and love on them. And eventually, you might even allow your pup to sleep with you in bed. I recommend, though, waiting until the dog is around a year old before inviting him or her in to sleep with you in bed. Wait until he's fully potty trained, crate trained, totally established, and definitely past the chewing stage. So, what do you do in the middle of the night if your puppy's fussing? First, make sure he doesn't need a potty break. The most common reason for being awake in the middle of the night is that the dog has to go potty. Now, if you can get the pup out before the potty break and shortly after he starts stirring or as a small whine, you'll probably have better luck getting him back to sleep without a fuss. Just wait to open the crate until there's a brief pause in the whining. That'll send the right message that whining does not mean he gets out. Yes, even in the moments that the pup stops to take a breath is just enough time to get the crate open and send the right message. Now let's talk about that nighttime outing. If you're following my advice on safety, your pup will not have a collar on while in the crate. Now you might be tempted to carry the pup out to go potty rather than hassle with the leash and the collar at like 2.37 a.m. But I really encourage you to stick with the routine. If you have a buckle collar that already has the leash attached, just pop it on and guide the pup to the potty spot. A student of my online class recently told me of the night she was carrying her puppy down the stairs in the middle of the night. She fell and in the process of trying to protect the puppy, she actually fractured her arm. Then her husband heard the commotion and he came running and he fell too. This is also why we recommend having the crate on the same floor as the potty door and using a baby monitor or a pet camera to hear your pup alert for you when they need a potty break. Now back to the nighttime outing. Keep it simple and quiet. Take your dog out of the crate and get him leashed up. Walk quietly to that potty spot. Now, if you're using the bell training method that I recommend, ring it quietly, say any phrase that you usually use, then remain quiet. Try not to turn on any more lights than you have to, and try not to make eye contact or say anything more to your pup than necessary. Once the potty business is done, it's back to bed. This is where some people run into some trouble. That pup has had a taste of human interaction and maybe he'd like more of it. Resist that temptation. Just cover the crate, turn on the white noise or calming music and head back to bed. He may cry or fuss, but as long as he's not panicking, this is a process that has to work itself out. While it's important to teach our puppies to be okay with being alone, we wanna keep them under threshold or panic mode while doing so. Now, if they panic to the point of digging and drooling and screaming and soiling or almost hurting themselves, we're actually creating a negative experience with the crate. I wish I could give you an exact advice on what to do in that situation, but to be honest, every dog in every situation is different. The single best thing you can do is prevent that negative experience from happening by helping to build up the positive association with the crate and ensure your puppy's needs are met before going down for the night. But if you've done that and you've followed all the tips in this video and he's still freaking out, it's time to reach out for more help. As part of my online course, we have several games that will help take your crate training to that next level. Some students have joined us at the pro level when this issue actually starts to arise in their home. 
and then they get a lot of personalized advice from me and my other trainers on our Zoom calls and in our private Facebook group. Now I can't tell you exactly what to do without knowing more about your situation, but if you give me a chance to ask more questions and get to know your puppy, I can definitely give you some detailed advice and we can work through it together. Now before I share my final thoughts on nighttime troubles with your puppy, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, so in summary, if your pup is struggling with crying at night, here are some things to try. Now, not all of them will work, but I strongly encourage you to try them for at least a little while, not just one hour or one day. Here goes my lightning round of tips if you have crying at night. Check for physical comfort, size of crate, and the need for a potty break. Definitely adjust those naps during the day and evening. Adjust the feeding schedule if needed. Work on crate training positively during the day as much as possible. Understand the difference between puppy complaining and the puppy panic. Now use all the crate training tools available to you. Keep a log so you can see how the changes you're making are impacting the night. Have a plan so you aren't tempted to invite the pup into bed prematurely. And reach out for help. Enroll in the online course and we can help you through this. Now I guarantee that someday your puppy will sleep through the night. It just takes time and training. In the comments below, tell me when you go to bed and how long you hope your puppy will sleep. 